Nate Fairdow. Hi, I'm Paul. I'm the co-founder of Lockatron. Today we're carrying on the Bolt. Yes. Very exciting. And this is your second product, right? Uh, this is actually our, our third generation Ooh, product. Ooh, third generation. Yeah. So we started in 2009 and kind of come out with the product every every two years or so. Let's do our packaging critique. Craft paper box, very trendy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pack. Uh, one of the things we did on our third generation product that we didn't do on our second was move to something that was easy to ship. Um, our second generation products, we use jewelry boxes like on the iPhone. It's just, it's so spendy and it's, it's, uh, I don't know, it's something people use once. So I think there's a good compromise to be made in doing craft paper with a nice sleeve. Yeah, I love craft paper. I mean, it's very recyclable, right? Every, well, everything is craft, like you don't have a foam transfer on the inside. Well, everything's craft. Yeah, so it's... Like a fentanyl box. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Is that what you guys had in mind? Fentyl yeah, box? <laughs> uh, so we, we worked with a, a company in England called Virgo Pack, and uh, they're just, they're a total joy. Uh, they just sort of come up with really creative ideas, uh, sort of make it sort of like a door, that kind of idea. For those of you who don't know, uh, Lockatron Bolt is uh, an internet connected door lock. You can lock and unlock it from your phone. Uh, there's a lot of encryption that goes into it and there's a lot of, uh, I guess, complicated gears and motors and uh, key uh, magic that we're, we'll dive into here shortly. So how many locks before you started with Lockatron? Uh, I knew a little about locks. Uh, the first version of Lockatron wasn't even internet connected. It was probably in 2007 that I built it in university. <laughs> And it was just an electronic lock that hooked up to an RFID reader that I put under a doormat. And then I'd have to put RFID tags in my shoes. So then like you walk, you walk up to your door and then you step on the doormat and the door unlocks for you. And it's like, it's a wonderful, wonderful experience. It, it worked great, but um, trying to just get my friends to like put tags in their shoes <laughs> was, was, it wasn't a hot proposition. So. Uh, it was around that time smartphones were starting to take off. Uh, the first Android phone had been announced and shortly after that, the first iPhone came out. And I think uh, then we sort of saw that was the future of this sort of technology. and uh, Picked up a lot of knowledge about how the mechanical por portion of how locks work along the way. Yeah, so I ended up having to put <laughs> tags in all of my shoes. <laughs> and then if I lost a shoe, which it did, usually didn't happen, but <laughs> <Friday> <laughs> yeah, you, you never know. Halloween, right? It gets crazy. Why brass? Uh, just it's really easy to machine, mm -hmm. and th that part is not as safety critical. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the the way the force is applied there. The only way you can sort of break that is is just you have you, s you have five of these rods, mm -hmm. so it's less common to see somebody try and insert a metal object that's very strong into the keyway because the key it has to also be bent like this to match the key profile and, and fork it. Um, there are some companies that have switched to using plastic instead of brass Wow! and <laughs> in that case there you do have issues mm -hmm. so the reason for using plastic is you can make the the, the chamber re-keyable mm -hmm. but uh, it comes with a trade-off where you can essentially force it open with a, with a screwdriver if you can get it into that chamber. Uh, brass is a good, good, good trade-off. So on the, the back side, we have a, a connecting cable for our keypad model that's coming out this summer. Uh, so essentially, you can have a keypad add-on. Uh, we want the semi-modular design there. So if you have a regular lock, you can just have use Bolt today. Or if you, if you move places or you move to an Airbnb and you want to upgrade your, your product to a keypad-enabled version, you can buy the keypad mm. as an aftermarket upgrade. So we have uh, two parts to this gear train. We mm -hmm. essentially have the, the worm, the first stage reduction. There's a second reduction underneath this large gear over mm -hmm. here. And then there's a basically an encoding ring over here that tells it whether it's locked or if this rotates 90 mm -hmm. degrees that it's unlocked. Uh, and then underneath here, where this part joins this part, there's uh, two sets of springs and sort of a, a I guess I'll call it a, it's kind of like a diamond shape. Um, that it allows it to, to rotate uh, 180 degrees, but then can also click past the springs. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately. <laughs> no, I can't get this out? Yeah, what we, what we do at the factory is... Uh, retaining ring. Yeah, we use a retaining ring that we stamp into position, and ah. it's press fit. So the only way to get that ring out is to, is to dremel it. <laughs> uh, Should we so. do it? Let's do it. We're doing it. Yeah, you might okay. need to use a mill or something. <laughs> well, we got a handheld dremel. All right, go for it. <laughs> Thank you.
All right. Cool. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, so I nearly destroyed this thing, but. So yeah, that that retaining ring also mm. secures the knob on the outside. Mmm. So you can see where it's a. Uh, we have a little washer in there yeah. to give it a space. Mm -hmm. And this part's die cast aluminum. And a secondary operation on yeah, the outside. That's right. Mm -hmm. And just like give it a nice like B blast or sand blast? Uh, we B blast. B blast yeah. and then anodized. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very cool. Oh, there we go. Yeah. That's a beautiful looking piece. The patented mechanism, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's, uh, that's that component right there. So it's uh, mm -hmm. this shape sort of like a diamond shape. It's rounded on one side and, and pointy on the other. Mm, and okay. this spring mechanism here. So essentially lets you drive it past and then still use your hands to, to turn it back. Mm. So it's basically a, a clutch mechanism that gives you enough tension to lock and unlock the door, but it's, it can be manually overridden uh, with a key or by hand. I don't quite want to destroy the worm gear. I really like these. So yeah, it's, it's important that that doesn't pop off either. <laughs> <laughs> like that? <laughs> Probably one thing that's a little mm -hmm. unorthodox is we use the wire antenna for mm -hmm. the Bluetooth. Oh. Uh, it's, yeah. Usually it's, uh, you kind of find your space constraints, so you use a chip antenna mm -hmm. or you use a PCB trace antenna. Here we actually had plenty of space on the inside of the unit and we, we tested all three. We made a PCB run that had mm -hmm. all three different antenna designs and we just found the an wire antenna propagated better. Oh, okay. So, uh, Very it's interesting. ended up being a cost savings for us, mm -hmm. um, but it's not not common to do in the industry. They, find, there's a worm gear probably beside your feet. Can yeah. you find it? No, I like worms. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, uh, you can see the die cast tool marks mm -hmm. here, and you can see the, the glue residue. Uh, what aluminum alloy did you use? Uh, this for this one, we've gone back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, so something that's, uh, we, we haven't finalized it, but I think we always look at ZMAX 3 mm -hmm. as our, as our go-to metal. It's, it gives the product a nice little bit of heavy heft to mm -hmm. it. Um, and it's, it's great to work with. It's easy to apply different finishes to it. Okay. So yeah, I think that's this product in pieces. I, I don't know that there's that much else. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's really awesome. Like your tooling is for these bigger parts, right? Yeah. Are fairly simple. And then you yeah. spend the money on where it really matters on yeah. the inside. So yeah. it's, I think that's that's one of the big steps is mm -hmm. we, because it's our third generation product, we mm -hmm. realized what the really critical components were so that it's a secure product, it's a, it lasts for a long time, mm -hmm. it's quiet and it, it looks good. And for us, we spend money on, on finishing, we spend money on gear so it's quiet, and we spend money on the on the PCB. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the other components, you can, you can get away with something that will last you 30, 40 years compared to, to what you're used to seeing in mm -hmm. a, I don't know, a smartphone that lasts one or two. Yeah. Is this ABS? Yeah, that's, so we use mm -hmm. ABS and then we uh, do either a matte black finish mm -hmm. on them afterwards or build that into the tooling depending on uh, whether we're using white or black. Mm -hmm. uh, is this an in-mold finish or is this a soft touch paint? Uh, that's, uh, that's a secondary paint I think on that okay. version and mm -hmm. then we switch to an in-mold finish uh, as a midstream tool change. Okay. For this, we basically just took our PCB, we found mm -hmm. an off-the-shelf enclosure, and then mm -hmm. uh, just applied a, a nice custom label to the, to the interior. Mm -hmm. so Save we have, money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we have a, a window here where you can send your blink-up code through, which is kind of like the classic electric imp feature. Mm -hmm. And then uh, everything else, thank you. Uh, everything else is pretty basic. It's basically just a Wi-Fi bridge to a BLE bridge uh, and a few status codes. Uh, Compared to our second generation, we had the Wi-Fi built in. Mm -hmm. With this, it's basically Wi-Fi just plugs into the wall, so you get low latency, you can mm -hmm. control it everywhere. With our version two, you kind of had to tap unlock and then it would go into sleep mode, and if it wasn't awake, then you'd have to wait five minutes for the mm -hmm. command to go through. But with Bridge, it's basically, it just goes through within uh, less than four seconds if it's in deep sleep and if it's actually warmed up and it's under a second. So, Very cool. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me how many people worked on the bolt? Uh, yeah, I'd say 22 people worked on Lockatron bolts from mm -hmm. start to finish. Okay. And so. uh, how many software engineers, how many E's, how many A's? Uh, one industrial designer, mm -hmm. three electrical engineers, uh, one mechanical engineer, um, one packaging slash graphics designer, mm -hmm. uh, and then I'd say one Android developer, one iOS developer, 
uh, one guy doing logistics and fulfillment and warehousing, which mm. is basically me half the time. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, a few other things. I think our website is also another two. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm sure there's another like seven people that are in between various parts of, of managing factory processes there in, 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 in Asia. Do you outsource the factory management? Uh, no, so we, we have a direct relationship with mm -hmm. our PCB factory and our lock factory. Uh, so we, we don't use an intermediary, um, but it's it sort of depends on, on the product that we're working on. Uh, and then and other products we have outsourced uh, that relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it goes well and sometimes it, it, <laughs> it's expensive and, and you don't see much results. So. Mm -hmm. What was the most challenging part uh, in the Lockatron Boat project? Uh, I think for us, it's the the transition from a from a crowdfunded version two product to a uh, retail version three product was was definitely a lot of growing up as a company. Um, I think with our version two product, we put sort of everything in in there. We put a knock sensor, we put a Wi-Fi chip, we put uh, a BLE chip, we put a sec a third microcontroller, uh, a crypto chip. So basically, there's four four MCUs into mm -hmm. that product. It's kind of a kitchen sink product. And uh, as a result, it's expensive and mm -hmm. it's complicated. Uh, but with our version three product, it's we're able to streamline a lot of that stuff down, get our bill of materials down, get our supply chain mm -hmm. streamlined, so we can actually sell this at, at a big box store for ninety nine dollars on the shelf. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's that's for us is the big turnaround is is going from something that's an ambitious idea to mm -hmm. something that's a, a reality for for every American. Can I ask for the bomb costs on the voltage? Uh, so the, the <laughs> usual usual formula mm -hmm. is basically, I guess, 4x whatever you see at retail. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, most products start out a little bit more expensive than that, and mm -hmm. then they, they scale to that as uh, as they sort of mature in their supply line. And if there's some, some sacks, hacks you can do or mm -hmm. relationships that you have, then you can actually get that a little bit cheaper. Mm -hmm. I really like this, you know, to see you guys spent money where it matters, yeah. right? And then just like bare basics where it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like for example, the enclosure for that one. It's yeah. really smart. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I think for us, it's it's important that the product's reliable, it's mm -hmm. simple, and it's it's accessible. And if if it is five hundred dollars and everything mm -hmm. is perfect, it's it's no longer nobody's gonna appreciate it, right? Mm -hmm. so. I probably have to get one of these myself now, yeah, but I awesome. can't put this back together. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so cool. much for coming in. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. So that's a big, big fan. Guest star. <laughs>